Ad copy testing is an essential part of every paid search advertiser's job. You should be constantly testing your message to see what works best. But used to be that you'd just go up, put in a couple or three different ad variants in an ad group, let them duke it out with even rotation, which isn't even a thing anymore. And then over time, you'd find your winner. But again, that's not really how it works anymore. You're not entered into the auction equally for each of the different ad variants you have. So how can you run a reasonable ad copy test and understand which message works best? That's where ad experiments can come in. So in this video, we want to walk you through how to use experiments to run a good responsive search ads test in Google Ads. Before we hop into the workflow for Google Ads experiments, I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about when I say that we're having challenges running ad copy tests the way that we used to. Now, Joe and I like to make things easy on ourselves, so we always label our ads when we start a new test. That allows us to use the label performance report in Google Ads in the report editor to see really quickly how our ads are performing. So if I click in here, it always defaults to the campaign level labels. But over here in this right hand bar, you can see here that there's label and ad. So I'm going to switch these two out. And now we can see all of the different ad labels that we have in this account that ran during this time period. I'm going to clean up this data a little bit, ditch some of these columns. So with the power of editing, it now becomes much more useful for you to look at and for me to talk through as we're looking at these stats. So the example I'm showing you is from this summer in this account. We launched new ad creatives in late June of 2024 and let them run for a few months until we decided we needed to make a change. Now, right now, all these ads are in a little bit of a goofy order, but that's because we had quite a number of different variants running. We have two campaigns in this account and each one of them had the same problem, just varying degrees. So as you can see, based on the label names that I have here, brand was one of the campaigns. So I'm just going to filter for the brand campaign up here. And here you can see that we had some ad variants that have been running since March of 23. We launched two new variants in June of 2024, and there was one cost focused old label variant that was in there for just a short period of time where we had a little bit of overlap. So here you can see that the existing ad had about 1700 impressions. New version two had 1200. New variant one had 866. And the cost focused one doesn't really matter, but it had 367. And for the most part, cost per conversion looks relatively well in line with what we would think performance wise. This last variant down here, high cost per conversion. And so although this high level brand ad is winning on pretty much every front, we didn't love that we weren't getting the same number of impressions here. That might seem a little nitpicky, but if we look at the non-brand campaign that we have, we have the same type of experiment, two variants that were running from March of 2023 and two new variants launched in June of 24. And I'm just now realizing, yes, if you think that we haven't run any other ad variants in that time, you're mistaken. I have filtered for everything that has more than one impression. So all the other ad variants that we tested between March of 23 and June of 24 lost. So we turned them off. So they don't have any impressions. This example highlights quite a bit more what we're seeing here. 8,400 impressions for the existing variant, 3000 for the new version one and only 200 impressions for version two that's new. Now, while brand seemed to follow the performance that we would want to see, this one does not. Yes, variant two of the new ad copy, not performing very well at all. But variant one is actually beating the existing ad variant in terms of conversion rate by quite a lot and cost per conversion. There's some really wonky stats showing up here with a $33 CPC compared to a $17 CPC and click through rate is quite a bit different. So because of this and because the brand campaign kind of fell in line in the same way, we wanted to set up a campaign experiment so we could see what was going on. Now, lucky for the timing of this video, this experiment is actually scheduled to end in just a couple days. So it has almost the full 84 days worth of data that we can run, but I'll show you those stats at the end. For now, let's jump into our Paid Media Pros placeholder account and I'll show you two different ways that you can set up ad copy tests in the Google Ads interface. To set up a new experiment, you need to be in the Campaigns tab. Come down right below Ads is going to be Experiments. And if we click on this, we have this kind of summary tab, whatever. But to create a new experiment, we just need to click on the blue plus button here. Then this is why I mentioned there are two different ways to create ad copy experiments in Google Ads. The first is going to be the most obvious, optimized text ads. Let's go ahead and walk through this one, even though I'm not going to set it all the way up. Click Continue. Now, the first thing you do setting up a text ads experiment is you select which campaigns you want your ads to run from. 
you can either default to all campaigns or you can select certain campaigns that you have in here. Let's just go ahead and select one of our placeholder search campaigns. Target ad has to be responsive search ads. Those are the only ads we have. And then we can filter for which ads we want to test on. And you can filter based on the text that is either in or not in headlines, descriptions, headlines and descriptions, all of the different paths and the URLs. So let's just say, for example, we wanted to test if any headline contained free shipping. We could then continue to filter further with either and statements or adding in additional pieces here. But for now, let's just say we're trying to find any ad with free shipping in a headline. Let's click continue. Now we get to choose what type of action we want to take on the experiment ads. You can do a find and replace, you can update the URLs, or you can update the text. So let's stick with find and replace. For that, you can find the text. Since we filtered on free shipping, let's assume we want to change out free shipping. So we can find the text free shipping in the headlines, and then we can either match whole words only, match case, and we get to replace it with fast shipping. I'm not saying this is a great test, I'm saying it's a test. Maybe you're trying to determine whether the free version of your shipping versus fast is a bigger selling point, or you have something completely different. Odds are, if you're watching this video, you know what messaging you would like to test. So take it easy on me with my examples. Coming up with these is hard. We can then click continue. And here you would set up your campaign variant name. You would give it a start date, and then you can run the duration of the test, which again can be a maximum of 84 days. If you were to select 85, it gets mad at you. So only 84 days now. And then you can give your campaign the regular experiment split. So with a 50% split, that means 50% of your messaging would be going toward the free shipping message or the control variant, and 50% would be going toward the fast shipping or the experiment version of the campaign. Once you clicked create variation, your test would start running on the next day. But again, the options you have here are find and replace, update the URLs or update the text. You can update text in the headlines. You can add a new headline. You can remove headlines or you can pin certain headlines in place. The same thing similarly is true for descriptions. You can add, remove or pin. And then if you wanted to update the URLs, you would take the final URL. You can either leave this blank, which means no change, or you can add in a new URL here, which would effectively be a landing page test. You could add in different text here for your display URL paths one and two, or you could add in a final mobile URL. So again, depending on which one of these pieces you want to change, enter the information into the respective box. And if you don't want to change something, simply leave it blank. The text already shows you no change. That means nothing's going to change there. Personally, I like how you can test different messaging and text ads pretty simple with this version. But honestly, the way that I normally test ad copy does not really lend itself to a quick find and replace of just a couple of messages or changing URL or something like that. Instead, I like to do tests that are something like this, where each column is going to be its own ad variant. So column B is template one. All of my headlines that I have pinned in headline one are gonna be on the brand. Things that are pinned in headline two would be a benefit statement. Things that are pinned in headline three would be different calls to action. The descriptions would be different data points for all of the benefits. And then we have a call to action and some sort of timing expectation. Template two has all of the same things in place, but now my headline one is calling out certain keywords and the call to action is in headline two. We already have a video that talks about responsive search ad templates that you can check out at the top of the screen right now. But for the sake of this video, you can see how template one is very different from template two, which is very different from template three. It's gonna be hard to use different formulas for text that contains or does not contain all of that sort of logic language to narrow down the test on what I want. So instead, we're going to use the more manual, more customized option of how you can set up an ad copy test. To set up this different variant, we just need to click on the blue plus button again, and then we're going to click on custom experiment. Since we're testing search ads, we'll leave the campaign type at search, click continue. At this point, we need to give our experiment a name. Hopefully you'll have a better naming convention than what I've got here. Then you choose your base campaign or which control campaign you want to use. To keep things consistent, let's just use the Halloween campaign again. Then we can adjust the suffix for the treatment campaign, which I always have to do because you'll see here, I always name them and it's got search Halloween search test, but I really just want it to say search Halloween new ad copy variant. That's what I want the name to look like in the interface because 
It's easier to come up with. So now let's go to save and continue. And here's where the fun happens. We are in the regular Google Ads campaign builder. You can see up in this drop down here, we are in an experiment campaign, the search, test, new ad copy variant. You can see we have other examples up in there. But any changes that you make to this campaign, this line item down here, is going to be what happens in your experiment campaign. So for ad copy testing, I would come in here, I would head into my ads section. We have all of these ads that have nothing to do with costumes or anything like that. But I would then create my different ad variants, have the different labels on them the way that I would normally want them, and make sure only the messaging for the new template is gonna be in place. So if I have template one as my control campaign, everything that I would put in this secondary campaign, in this control campaign, would be either template two, template three, template four, whatever I'm testing. I'm not gonna take too much time to actually create all these ads because I'm assuming you guys are smart enough can figure out that these should each be the new text that you would have in place. And then once you've updated your ads, you can come up here to schedule. And Google really likes to know what you would like to see performance wise from these campaigns. So for this, I go pretty simple. I'm always hoping that my conversions increase and that my cost per conversion decreases because that's what everybody wants and it's pretty simple. We then have a different view, but the experiment split is the same. It's gonna to default to 50%, but you can change that based on what you wanna do here. And then again, you get to schedule your ads. They are gonna start the next day. Same thing, you can only run campaigns for 84 days, 85 throws an error, as you can see here. And then lastly, you can do a campaign sync. By default, this is gonna be on. What that means is that any change that you make to your base campaign will automatically sync to the trial campaign so you don't have to make the changes manually. If you've watched very many videos or heard me talk about Google making changes for you, you probably know that I always turn this to off. It says the experiment won't sync changes from the base to trial campaigns, but honestly, that's probably fine. Personally, while my experiments are running for my ad copy tests, I know that it's in there, so any change I make to one campaign, I make to both. I would rather personally know that it's being done because there have been some times where I had sync enabled, and my changes didn't seem to carry over, so I'm gonna handle that one myself. But then once you're done, you just click create experiment. It will schedule itself to start running the next day, and you'll be on your way. Now, earlier in this account, I teased that we do have an experiment running, and that's why the date range that I have up here stops on September 13th. So let's hop into the other portion of this interface and look at those stats. If we head back into campaigns, we can go to the regular campaigns tab and you can see here that I've got the line items for the brand control and the brand new ad variant. Same thing with our non-brand campaigns. So at a really high level, I know which campaign is the control, which is the experiment, and I can see all the data that I would need to over here. But personally, I like Google to do a little bit of math for me. So let's go over to experiments. We can see we've got two tests in progress. So let's go ahead and look at the non-brand ad variant. The data will always default to the date range that the entire experiment has been running when you look at it from this view in the Google Ads interface, which is why I like to go here. Started on September 14th. You'll remember the report interface. It ended on September 13th. Google gives you a little bit of a summary up here at the top. But let me tell you, something that has a 28% lower cost per conversion and 40% more conversions is looking pretty damn good to me. So here we have the base campaign, the trial campaign down below. Impressions look a lot more even, 5,900 to 5,700. Click-through rate looks okay, a little bit different. CPC is a little off, which is a little goofy, but cost is very normal. Cost per conversion looks excellent and different. Conversion rate on the trial campaign is wildly high, so that's excellent. Overall, this would be considered a win for this new ad variant. And now let's look at the brand version. And in this one, we're actually losing. Cost per conversion is up about 22%. Conversions are down 14%. Again, click-through rate looks about the same. Impressions are about the same between the two. Cost per click is about the same. Biggest difference is gonna be this conversion rate here. The base campaign has almost a 1% advantage on the trial campaign, which is leaving quite a bit of a difference when it comes to the cost per conversion. And I wanted to show you both of these because as a last takeaway for this video, I need you to be prepared. Not every test you run is gonna be a winner. Some of your new ad variants are going to lose to the old variant. 
How do you think I feel? Now in this brand campaign, I still have a variant from March of 2023 that performs better than anything else I've been able to come up with. But since we use Google Ads experiments, I know for a fact that every variant that we've come up with still isn't going to outperform that March variant because we've got equal impressions, pretty equal stats otherwise across the board, and we can really see how these ad variants are performing head to head. So hopefully this walkthrough of the customized experiment, which we went through last, or the experiment version for text ads where you have to filter and find your specific messaging has made it a lot easier for you to feel confident in setting up your ad copy tests. Because as I mentioned at the top, this is one of those staples of good paid search campaign management. If you've got any additional questions about ad copy testing or Google Ads campaign experiments, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.